Now, I feel like I really talk this one up because um, we're immediately facing a Risco player. Wow, and the Risco player just conceded. Again, I don't really like to show none games like this, but I just find that incredibly amusing that this was consecutive. I haven't actually had any breaks in game. I've shown you every single game consecutively and the Rusko player immediately quit because they saw a Finn. What does that tell you about Finn? What does that tell you about Finn? Hello, you've caught me again making um, new decks from my friend's account. In, in a way, it's like a secondary account for me, but I'm kind of helping my friend at the same time. So this is going to be a follow-up to the previous video. The previous video we made a really strong deck for Toski with rares and mythics, and we used all of our wild cards. Now, inadvertently, I thought this would become a nice follow-up video because this is what happens now. What happens when you run out of rare and mythic wild cards? So I've gone ahead and chosen Finn the Fangbearer as the commander for this video because he's an uncommon, and that's going to be very helpful when you want to make a new deck. You don't always need rares and mythics to make the deck really strong. Um, you can you can actually make a very competitive deck. In fact, Finn is very strong. And the reason he's strong is because whenever a creature with Death Touch hits a player, they get two poison counters. Okay, so I've just been filling the deck with really low, um, really cheap Death Touch creatures. Now, I encountered another issue because not only are we, are we low on rares and mythic wildcards, we're also very low on common and uncommons. We can have 10 commons and two uncommons. So I'm having to be very picky with what I can actually unlock. So if you do want to join along and make this deck, you will need no more than a dozen or so to start with. Obviously, you will have in your own collection a number of Death Touch creatures that are rares and mythics. That's pretty much going to be inevitable just because you, you must have opened a few by now. And if you haven't, then just work your way up to it. Some of the really good mythics and rares with Death Touch are Ronus. And our um, Axe Bane Ferrex, Questing Beast, Sarath gives your other creatures Death Touch. This is kind of useless in the deck because your creatures are going to have Death Touch anyway. Acidic Slime is really good as well. So remember these ones. And as I said, we don't have any rare or mythic spares. So when I put in something like Ronus, just find an, a replacement for it. We want to have a few because budget doesn't always necessarily mean zero rares and mythics because there will be some of you out there which have a few, as I said, so yeah, we're, we're going to pop in Ronus here, but just think of this as a placeholder if you don't have one. I want to get the biggest edge I can possibly get from just the little um, selection I have. We've got Axe, Bane, Ferrex, so two rares. The mana base is very cheap. It's literally 40 forests. And yeah, we're going to want... I mean, Finn is probably going to be doing the most amount of work here. Because it's his ability after all. Um, so what I'm just going to quickly do now. So that's got backup modern death touch. That's actually pretty good as well. Just filling the deck with as much synergy as possible. Oh, we just get death touch. Another creature comes in. This gets death touch. Hmm. Let's just craft what we have. So this takes a bit of confidence. Some people might not like crafting until you've actually, you know, had to think about it. But I like to just see what we're working with. We've got two more commons we can craft. Okay, so two mana, two, two, death touch. Yeah, I think we'll go for this this one here. The reason we're going very low curve is we want it to be super aggressive. Are there any more? I've never been in a situation, by the way, where I've never had any wild cards whatsoever, and we're about to encounter that. So this is where we kind of hit rock bottom. One more common. Um, I guess we'll go for... Oh, it's, it's very tricky here. Two mana, one, two death touch, or two mana, one, one. <clears throat> or, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, we'll just go for this. Okay. So let's get that out of the way. We definitely needed those, because we definitely needed... Don't have enough wild cards. Two common. I've got two commons. It says two commons. Why is that not letting me unlock this? Craft. Okay, fair enough. It would not let me do it in the once it's in the deck. And there's one there as well. Oh, that's an uncommon. That's an uncommon, guys. Fine, we're going to have to put this scorpion in. Right. 
apologies for that. I couldn't tell by the symbol. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So now we have zero. We have absolute zero wild cards. So where do we go from here? Okay, so we don't have like a massive amount of creatures. How many do we have? We have 15. I mean, it's it's going to be fine. We want it to be high progressive. So now we want to have um, bite mechanics. Now, luckily, the other reason I've chosen green again is because we had unlocked some green cards from the previous run of deck building from Toski. So we can use some of the same cards. And that's always useful to build decks which are adjacent in color, at least have one commonality. So you can use the same ones. So we're going to put in the same things with fight, which is always really nice. Remember, we have no wild cards left. We are just using the things we have. So it might help you watching this previous video to show you what I did there. Um, so I'm just going to put as many fights. Luckily, this is a, a fight spell, which is rare. But again, if you don't have this, just use any other uh, fight spell. And we don't really want to be going to three mana. We want to be high progressive. Now we want to do cards that deal damage equal to your creature's power. So target creature deals damage. These are better because these don't um, these don't endanger your creature in the battle. This is cool. It can fight planeswalkers. That's going to be useful if we have a hard time. Um, Master's rebuke. We've got 69 cards. Animus Might. This is 3 mana, but it gets too cheaper if you target a legendary creatures. And we do. We have Finn and Rabid Bite. Okay, so that's good for rounding out the... So we've got a lot of... <clears throat> we have a lot of Death Touch, a lot of fight abilities. Now, we want to get some hard advantage, really. Now, again, I don't want to go too many Rares and Mythics. Because obviously this is going to be from a very, very new perspective. But anything that lets you consistently draw. So we're going to use Toski. I'll throw back to the previous video as well. I'll try not to overwhelm too much. So how many rares and mythics we've got? We've got one rare, two rares, and a mythic. And we have the fight one, don't we? Which is inscription. So about four rares so far. I think that's acceptable. Four or five. I was, I was going to go up to ten, really. But we'll see how we get on. So we've got some stuff. Now we want to go for a draw. Because this is where green needs to draw to keep replenishing the things we've lost. So this is something we unlocked in the previous deck as well. So whenever they target our stuff, we draw a card. That's wonderful. And this might feel like cheating a bit. But remember, I'm trying to take into account the fact that you already have a few, a handful of cards that you've unlocked already. Generous Stray... Peregrine to upscale the heights. So I do want to use the rares, lots of card advantage. So yeah, we've got the Garden Project unlocked. This is an absolute staple. So if you don't have this unlocked, I would highly recommend it. It uses, it can be used in multiple decks. So don't worry too much about unlocking this. You won't regret it. And Tribute to the World Tree as well is just wonderful. Okay. So we don't put anything too expensive because as I said, we want to be quite aggressive. So now I've kind of run out of the stuff that I want to use. So when you get into the situation where you're completely kind of blanked on what you can use, I would just filter by all the green cards you, you own. Okay? And then now from here, we're just going to try and see what value we can get. A bit of value. Um, you can see the curve's really aggressive so far. So as I said in the last video, Elvish Mystic is always good to just do a bit of ramping, even though it doesn't have Death Touch. We've got Lanarite Elves as well, which has the same thing. Utopia Sprawl. Anything that can progress you a bit further. Hey, why well, might might come back to that? Just trying to see <clears throat> what we have. Broken Bond, that's nice to destroy our factor enchantment. Attractors fall, same thing here. Again, these are all commons on commons that I'm choosing at the moment because I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to keep it low to the ground as much as possible, apart from the bends, the slight bends. So emergent sequence gets a land of the play with a counter. Glimpse the core does as well. Again, Canker Bloom, we'll come back to that. It's part of the creature subset that destroys stuff if you pay extra mana into the north. That's nice. Lotus Cobra, I don't think it's too necessary in the deck. It does ramp you a bit, but we're not really ramping too hard because, you know, we're, we've got a lot of aggression here on the low end. Ranger class might be nice. Makes your creatures a bit bigger, gives you wolves. Wolves. But again, it is a rare. Sylvan Anthem. 
I do like that in this deck because this deck is going to be very, very low to the ground. We'll come back to that again. Don't be too scared of coming back to stuff. I think having one cultivate is nice because if your fin dies, you're going to want to recast them again anyway. So it's nice to just have a bit of range there to go a bit late game. Manglehorn, I do like this to destroy. It's only destroys artifacts, but the artifacts also come in tapped. I, I do like creatures with stuff loaded onto them. And then Rex Sage, I do like that as well. Settle the Wilds might not be so good here because our curve's not too high. Planes of Orcus will come at a premium. Most of them are mythic. If you have any, try to put them in, I guess. Um, again, I don't want to overwhelm too much. Not hit the quota of 10 yet. And then, yeah, now we're going into expensive territory. So although we have good cards on the high end here, we do want to keep it low. Because the whole point of Finn is we want to survive the early game as much as possible and win very quick. We don't want to bog the deck down with loads of expensive things. Saying that, I mean, we have a Garrick unlocked. We can put one in. Having one Planeswalker should be fine. And I think we're going to go back to those Artifact and Enchantment, in, sorry, Artifact and Enchantment killers. Um, so what did we have? It was, what was it again? Uh, Outland Liberator. We'll put the Sylvan Anthem in here. We'll count the rares and mythics at the end. I want to keep them underneath 10. But yeah, it's it's pretty rough to go to exclusively commons and commons. I was thinking about doing the video like that, but I thought it'd be a bit of a disservice because it just wouldn't, just wouldn't hit right. I mean, it depends how much of how much bravado you want. You could say, oh yeah, I'm winning with commons and uncommons. Yeah, that's all going to well, but no one else is going to care. This is from a purely budgetary standpoint. And obviously, if you want, if you have played a few games, I'd say most people that are watching this have probably played a few anyway. So you probably have a few unlocked. Something I would like is, I don't know if I have any unlocked, is a way to just give Hexproof. Toxic against Hexproof. Plus two, plus two. If Enchanted Creature has Toxic against Hexproof. So we don't have Toxic, but we do have some with Toxic in the deck. Mm, I don't really like that, to be honest. If I command and had hex, uh, toxic, I would. So now we need nine cards. We're getting we're getting to a good position here, where we're going to be able to just get a game in and see how how well we do. Um, maybe we do put the cobra in. I don't know how useful is that going to be. Maybe. It just we're just kind of running out of cards, aren't we? Um, Return a permanent card from Gravity Hand. That could be okay. Or we could even go for this frog. I mean, you have to pay to give it Death Touch, but it does tap for mana. So, um, yeah, okay, we'll put the frog in. Frog seems fine. I don't know about this. I'm going to put Ranger Class in because we're running out of options. Maybe Titanic Growth just for lols. I mean, this is. So, it's decent. Majesty. This draws cards only if your creatures have four greater. Not so hot. Each forest you control. I mean, this could be a wing con. Blanchwood armor. This this has killed people before. Let's just put one of those in for fun. Return card from Gravity Hand. And it's tap. Yeah, it's fine. That taps for a land. Well, it can become a land as well. Five left. We're so close, guys. Maybe we need more Death Touch creatures. Not, sh not sure now. Starting to doubt myself. Provisioner. That's good. Sentinel's okay as well. Ideally, we'd have more Death Touch, I suppose. Something with, something to give First Strike would be good, I suppose. Because First Strike and Death Touch means your stuff is basically unblockable. Or maybe we just throw in a single Nissa because it's just crazily good. And we have it unlocked, and it's just a rare. Yeah, we're, we're just running out of options here. And okay, we'll go to the artifacts now. Let's just see if there's anything that gives First Strike that we have unlocked. Rune Chanter's Pike. First Strike is actually good. It is a rare though. We're just going to look at the things that are not collected. There's a lot. That's an uncommon. And that can give First Strike. We do have them at lower... Uh, that's not quite it. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a premium, isn't it, First Strike? Or well, that's a common... How many instances of sorcery do we have? We have 
23. Uh, fine, we'll put the Chandler's Pike in. It's a bit weird. It's a bit different. And what else can we have? Soul Steel Axe. This is actually an incredible card. Yeah, we're definitely going to put this in. It's got Trample as well. Shadow Spear gives Trample. And we've got one more card left. Arcane Signet. Okay, let's quickly review. I wish there was a way to check how many rares and mythics you actually put in. That would be a really good counter. But they don't have that counter in the game. So I'm just going to quickly eyeball here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve. Right, I think, so basically, I think we've got about 12 rares. Tell me in the comments below if you think that's reasonable for a budget deck. Because it's going to go into, it's going to kind of bleed into what I named the deck for the for the YouTubes. You know, I want to give people an accurate representation of what the experience is we're having here. 12 rares, I think that's fine, considering we opened, what, 30 packs yesterday. And, um, well, it won't be a say to do to you, but, and we did get a hell of a lot of rares. So, Considering this is a leftovers build and it's got a very different feel to Toski, it's a lot more aggressive. I think that's fair. If you don't think that's fair, um, then I'm sorry. You might have to grind a just a little bit to get a few rares and mythics. It, it might take you a bit of time, but I still think this is a really good budget build. 12, 12 rares. You can't go wrong. You know, even in even in real life, if you were to try and get twelve rares together, probably wouldn't be too bad depending on what they are i know that guardian project in paper is quite expensive toski can be garrick's not even real this is fairly cheap ronus is like three four quid this is about five six quid so yeah all together in paper this is actually a pretty cheap deck i reckon in paper you could probably get this for about 40 pounds or less which i think is pretty cheap given you know how how powerful this is going to be so what i'm going to do now is we're going to take it into some games and see how you get on but yeah if you um if you like this list don't forget to copy it play it tell me how you get on we'll do some games and we will review it at the end and give you my thoughts on the 12 rare deck i'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored and because of that the channel does need help from people like you so if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. So just consider this. This is the fourth ever game on this account I've ever played. Or my friend's account. Now, I don't know how many games he's played. Probably not much at all. He doesn't even have any decks built for Historic Brawl, so Sithis just goes to show that the algorithm, it's got nothing to do with how long you've played. Nothing to do with how long you've played at all. It's completely to do with what's in your deck. That is definitely what I'm going on now. And it was just an interesting test, even though there wasn't any actually gameplay here, just to say that, yeah, even if you've just started Magic, if you're using, if you've dumped loads of money into the game, you're still going to be facing insane decks. So keep that in mind. You're not going to get an easy road by starting off super strong. Okay, game number five. Muxus, yeah, pretty much crazy strong decks. It's funny though, don't, this used to be used a hell of a lot. Then the algorithm, um, I think it put them up higher. But yeah, this is completely, completely, completely anecdotal there is no evidence to suggest the queue even exists but i can only tell you from experience this is just the vibe i get from playing you know i've been playing this for a long time now three three or four ish years i think played, played magic for a long time before that and yeah there's no written documentation because wizards doesn't want you to know how it works because if you knew how the algorithm worked you would abuse it but I think this these videos, even though this wasn't the primary intent, this was more to help you get budget to competitive, it does shed a light on the system, and that's important, I, I believe. So they might be considering using a lightning bolt here, or something along those lines. Goblin Crater Maker.
Yeah, let's kill it. Just for the sake of getting out of the way. Gaining two life is actually legitimately good against red because you just never know when a bit of extra life is going to come in handy. Now, I don't know how well we're going to do here, essentially, because red is... Once they get to Muxus, we could literally just lose the game there and then. And we do not have any more fight spells. Which is concerning. If they play some kind of rock, we can destroy it to slow them down. If they play something like a worn power stone, that would be a really good hit. Goblin Instigator gets two blockers. Fair. And the Goblin Banner it. Okay. Let's go for the Guardian Project. We, we're going to try and overwhelm them with value here. Now, I definitely don't want to attack because they can triple block and we only kill one. So that would be bad. This is where some kind of pump spell... Like, if we had a pump spell that said plus two, plus oh, first strike in green, that would be sick. But, you know, I don't think we, we didn't... We didn't actually look at the green first strike abilities, but we'll see. We have two creatures coming in next turn, so we can draw an extra two cards. And then it's going to be a battle of attrition. That's why I'm really happy we've got the project. Mentor. So that's going to put a counter on something else when this attacks in. So I can do it again. Wow, there's five damage. This is why gaining that life earlier really made a difference, because it kind of feels like they only gained... They only did... Uh, two, Three damage there. Fights. Okay, that's fantastic. That's actually really good. Let's go for this. Draw a card. Yeah, the Guardian Project, as I said in the deck tech, it makes a humongous difference. Um, <clears throat> if they double block Finn, let's just swing in. They can... Block it, that's fine. Nice. Okay, so now it's a question of do we just go for. I think we just optimize our mana here because we could have fought the Goblin Batter it, but I think there's going to be better targets later on, to be honest. Killing this guy, it's, it's annoying, but we can block it with any of our Death Touches here. Although we do need our Death Touches to remain alive, so. Power and toughness equal the number of creatures you control. Okay. We do have a way to just kill the flyer. So we're in a, we're in a lot of... We're having a lot of luck here. Take the flyer. We can kill the banner. Deals damage equal to his power. We can also kill the instigator. Um... Which I think we do, just to give them six in effect. And then that means next turn we're going to be one hit away from killing them. Unless I have a board wipe or multiple blockers. So you can see why this deck is strong. I'm not saying, I'm not saying by the way, that our deck is not deserving of being in this high rank. But I am suggesting that the game is harsh to assume anyone with a powerful commander deserves to be up this, this high, but yeah. Goblin War Chief, so they need one more blocker. They could have two more cards here. They have two two drops that cost red one. Dragon Mantle, interesting. Well, I don't know if that's going to help. Unless now they play two creatures. Or well, they've got two kill spells. They need two kill spells. They're going to swing in, they don't, they don't care. <laughs> this is the final this is just a final hurrah from them isn't it pay it then there we go how much honor do they have they're just gonna pay one red they could have paid an additional red there all right let's see what would what one red spell would stop three attackers I mean, there's there's a one red spell that deals one damage to each each creature target opponent controls, but then Finn would survive. Damn, yeah, six more in effect. You can see how strong this deck is once it gets going. But yeah, I hope you're exploring and learning more about this game. If you're if you're new to it, you'll you'll soon see that Finn, Poison, 
and aggression are very, very powerful. Slightly risky hand, but I think I want to keep it. No particular reason. I just like to, I just, I don't know. There's something about having fight spells ready. It's good. We've got three fight spells. We have a way to destroy a, a mana rock. Now, the only issue here is that Judith is actually really powerful against us. We have a lot of X1s in our deck. So creatures with variable power, but low toughness, excluding Finn, of course. But uh, let's play him out here. And Red Black has a lot of removal, so without any Hexproof, we might be in trouble. Rakdos could be a natural enemy to Finn. We'll see, though. Are we playing someone... There's always the eternal question. Are we playing someone with a strong deck who's not played the game for long, or vice versa? Ooh, okay. Mindstone, we can kill that. This is why we kit out our deck with this tech. But yeah, over the past two days, I've been playing on my friend's account, just testing, you know these these decks and so on and so forth and um is it going to be another roper it is interesting the statistics and data i'm finding finding that there's a lot of people using powerful decks no matter their skill level and it's very it i understand it's very abstract and nebulous to kind of speak off someone's skill level when i can't see them i've only had one game with them but there's a lot of telltale signs it's like it's like if someone was a professional sportsman and you just played a game of basketball versus somebody for the first time, you'd know if they hadn't played very long. You'd just know. And it's the same here. It's just certain moves, certain interactions. There was a move against the Sauron player in my previous video, which you should definitely check out, the Toski video. Please watch that. It's the part one of this. They did some weird moves, like they did an Alpha Strike. And Alpha Strike is when someone attacks with all the creatures. But they didn't care about their own life. By leaving no defenders behind, it means that I had the open window to kill them. So, yeah, you have to, have to be very cautious. And now we've got an Axebane Ferrex. We are just going to go full, full ham here. We don't even care about losing the Rex Sage. They can't tackle the Finn. Finn having three toughness is actually... It really makes a huge difference. Really does. And the shield and the artwork actually reflects that really well for a change. You know, flavour and rules. Flavor and rules combining together makes for an ultimate experience. You know, sometimes you just have a creature on your artwork. You think, like, what's that guy doing? But yeah, he has an axe, probably dripping with poison blade attacks and a shield to give him the three toughness. It's pretty cool. This guy, this guy draws you a card of life. It doesn't correlate with the artwork unless you want to kind of abstractly think that he's going through a door. He's finding new information. But why losing the life? I get why in terms of the color pie. Black always draws and loses life. But in terms of flavor, maybe he stood on a trap. Finding information. It's kind of interesting to delve into it. It's very deep, but that is this channel. This channel is a lot deeper than others may presume. Um, yeah, so from the card selection I'm seeing so far, although we are also using commons on commons, there doesn't seem to be too much of a correlation here. But also combining that with the speed in which they're playing... It's giving me a few interesting tidbits of information. So we could kick this, put two counters and fight. Let's just do that. I'll choose any number. You get to do all of them. That's pretty crazy. So two counters on here. And then we gain the life. And then we'll have... Uh, yeah, we'll have that fight this so that will actually die sadly because of the death touch so i should have actually done the rex yeah that was silly of me but yeah i mean you could say i made a stupid mistake there yeah it was a stupid mistake i completely admit that but yeah losing the ferrox i completely forgot that death touch yeah fair enough that might have actually cost me the game but we'll see we'll see it doesn't matter there's me talking about people's skill level, and I make a stupid mistake. <laughs> it's the universe telling me to shut up, basically, isn't it? There are eight poison, though, and we have three fight spells. So they really just need a... Um, just a kill spell, to be honest. And if they don't, then we... Win, maybe? I don't know. It is a bit gutting. 
that we did not acknowledge the death touch. Can we survive past it? We hope so. They're going to blitz. Now, blitzing suggests that they're going to attack. Um... I'm not sure what to think about this move. They just blitzed it to draw a card. Maybe they have a kill spell now to kill the Thin. Maybe that was a genius move. Doomblade. Power word kill. No. Let's we'll see what happens if we attack. If this gets through, they just die. Oh, man. I feel bad now. But who's to say that wasn't a professional player? You tell me. I made a mistake too. <laughs> I made a mistake too. Okay, we get to go first again. That's pretty lucky to be honest. Going first a lot. And we are facing another high level commander. Let's see if um, how we get on here. Hopefully we don't make any mistakes. So this in total is game six or seven, I believe. Okay, so Tatiova, the reason she's strong is well not only is because she's an uncommon it's because she rewards you for doing things you would do anyway and any commanders that reward you for doing literally no extra thing is really strong and uh, that's why cards like rusko if you've seen rusko are very strong because it rewards you for playing non-creature spells which is what dimir players love to do and tatiova rewards you for playing lands and fetch lands which is something that simic players love to do as well and drawing a card is already good, but the life on top of that, it does stack up. It really does. And there is something to be said about playing fetch lands before the commander's out. There's this push and pull. And I always find this separates players from being excellent to being not so great. Sometimes it's exactly the same as when you get a um, Turgrid player. So Turgrid is a 5 mana commander that cares about whenever an opponent discards or sacrifices. You get the thing. You get the permanent if they sacrifice it or discard. But a lot of Turgrid players, they will play all the discard effects before Turgrid actually comes out. So they're losing all the all the synergy. Now in this case, it is unfortunate that the opponent didn't want to continue playing. But yeah, again, this goes towards the data that you get from this video. We're just playing more high tier commanders. Moving on to the next one. Now, I feel like I really talk this one up because um, we're immediately facing a Rusko player. Wow. And the Rusko player just conceded. Again, I don't really like to show none games like this, but I just find that incredibly amusing that this was consecutive. I haven't actually had any breaks in game. I've shown you every single game consecutively. And the Rusko player immediately quit because they saw a Finn. What does that tell you about Finn? What does that tell you about Finn? Okay, so this is the next game. We're actually going to go second for a change, which is fair enough. We've been going first quite a bit now. This Sigarda has Hexproof. We're going to struggle to kill this. Um, I mean, we do have a hell of a lot of fight mechanics, but I feel like it's just not going to be a very good start if we can't target their stuff. Okay, this one is... I don't know. I don't have very high hopes for this game against Sigarda. Sarah Ascendant. We're going to... I think this could be the game we get taken down, guys. <laughs> With the freaking Sarah Ascendant. <laughs> That's a card. Although, saying that, Lifelink is meaningless against us, isn't it? Lifelink is kind of like... Meh. We'll just ramp a bit here, because in the next turn, we can go for Finn and then fight something anyway. Um... Darian, oh my goodness me. This is the first player and deck of six. So this combination of player and deck skill. This is high. This is high, man. Alright, let's see if we can just deal some do some dirt here. Feature tokens in this room. Okay, so how many fight spells we've got? We've got two fight spells. So we can make him indestructible. Kill the King Darian. I want to say King Durian. Some of you might not know this, but I am half Thai, and in Thailand we like durian fruit. So a little nugget of information for you there. Uh, little, 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 plus five, plus five, flying. I think we want to kill the ascendant because I don't want that boost. Once it gets to six six, that is going to be tricky. Okay, now, okay, we've taken care of two high power things there. Can we go further? Kapar's call. Uh, what does it say? 
create a human. So they're going to have Sigala next turn, and that's where we start pooping ourselves. Deals damage equal to its... Yeah, okie dokie. Let's do that. So the only problem, to be perfectly honest with you, is the fact we're not going to be able to deal with the Zagada. So at that point, it is a race. It is a race. Um, so we either cultivate here or go for the Tajuru. I think I want to go for Tajuru because we want to... We do have an infect clock here. Can we take down this player? So is it going to be... Is it going to be... Are they going to block? Let's find out. Oh boy, they don't care. They've got absolute testicles here. Which is ironic for a female angel. But I don't know, maybe she has testicles. Um, okay, so... If we had another creature to play here, that would have been absolutely sick. But yeah, it's a shame. If they have a huge aura as well, we're absolutely screwed. All the glitters. Okay, 6-6, six, six, anything else? Oh, Christ. Is that a two-turn clock? Oh, shizzle my nizzle. <laughs> For each forest we control, let's go. Oh, you want to play? You want to play with the big boys? Now we're going for infect and regular. Oh, goodness me. So we literally have... Depending on what this... Oh, my goodness. Okay, they just... They, we just, we just, we just won again. How the hell did we just beat a Sigarda deck? How the hell did we just beat that? What? <laughs> okay, so I don't really know how to feel after the testing. We had, what was it, seven games, and I won every single one of them due to player concession. We just won fair and square, or... You know, I, I don't know what to say. I'm a bit shocked. It could be that the opponents were all brand new players. I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's so strange because to start with, I thought that it just puts you in regular hell cube. And, you know, in one of the games, I did say that you you face strong decks regardless of the player. But that last opponent seemed like they knew what they were doing, the speed they were playing, the cards they were using, they seemed to be pretty good. But they still attacked when we had lethal. I'm finding that to be a common thread amongst new players. So if you are a new player, I will tell you this. This is the most important thing I can say to you is look how much life you have. Look how much attack power the opponent has, including infect damage. And assess the situation. Just take 30 seconds longer than usual to just assess that. If they have lethal on you, hold back your blocker. And probably play an extra blocker as well. Because one blocker is not safe. If they have a kill spell, you're down at minus one blocker. So that's probably the most important thing I could tell you. What they should have done in that last game, the Sagana should have held back and blocked. The Finn. Or maybe the other one. You know, I know that I had Blanchard armor and that was pretty crazy. And it's funny to think that this was kind of thrown in at a whim, but my goodness, my goodness, this card. The guy's face looks crazy. I've just realised on this, but yeah, I'm a bit lost for words. And well, I'm not while well, I'm speaking, but I'm lost for words figuratively in that we won seven in a row. If that's your intention of playing arena, then probably build this. Utilise the skills I've taught you. I've shown that you can build two decks now from scratch. In fact, three. I did a video a while back last year which did exactly the same concept. I'm really trying to I'm really trying to perpetuate these videos and these ideals because a lot of people say this game's pay to pay to win. It's not. I've used two people's accounts from scratch and managed to win multiple times through thick and thin, through low selection of card choice, you know. I don't know what to tell you. If you're struggling, then maybe it's not necessarily to do with the pieces you have, but it's the mentality of learning to be resourceful. Check out more of my training videos. I think there's a lot to be learned here. Keep the curve low when you're starting because you don't want to keep it too complicated. Keep it creature-based because that's the simplest way to win games. Both the Tusky video before this, again, watch that video as well if you haven't seen it. That's basically part one of this. Um, 
And to think the Tusky we did before this, we had more challenges and we had more rares and mythics in the deck. So just because we have rares and mythics, it doesn't mean anything. There's no correlation with the amount of rares we pulled and the amount of wins we had. We had a fair few games with no rares pulled at all, and we still won through one way or another. I know that enemy concessions, that's not something you can replicate. That is complete sheer luck. Through one reason or another, we had the Sithis quit, we had the Rusko quit, but still it counts towards your win ratio if that's what you care about. Some people I know are absolutely obsessed with winning, getting the dailies done. If you want to get the dailies for winning, maybe this is the deck for you. It only hits the mono green daily quests, but still, I'm not really sure what else I can add. I wanted to get a full range of videos where we won and lost, to be perfectly honest, because if it's only win wins, I don't really know what to change. I can only change cards based on the weaknesses in the deck. So far, I can't really see any because we haven't really had an, enough of a sample size to really ascertain what we could do to enhance it. But to be honest, a dozen rares, and this is the outcome I got from spending, what, two or three hours with a friend's account. Um... But yeah, definitely check out Tosky video part one. You'll find it very easily. And yeah, that one should be titled from zero to hero. So I'm not sure I want to title this one yet, but honestly, I can't vouch for this enough. Probably one of the strongest uncommon budget decks you can get. This video is hitting multiple different topics. How to build aggressively, how to build on the cheap, how to build using very few rares and mythics. Remember, if you do not have the rares and mythics I've used here, just slide in something else. These aren't absolutely integral. We didn't even pull this at once. We didn't even pull Garrick once. So don't let that consume you by saying you don't have the rares and mythics. That's perfectly fine. I have absolutely zero left in this account. So I have to apologize to Elliot for not having any left. But I might do more videos in the future grinding this uh, account as well. I might even do some other friends' accounts to see what we can do. But yeah, I hope this is proven. You can build from a budget of zero. I did not spend any money on this. My friend Elliot did not spend any money on this. Completely free-to-play perspective. And this is the second deck we built. <laughs> and we're missing a fair few components that I would love to use in my regular regular build. If you want to see a fully souped-up version of this deck, which I think probably did far worse, ironically enough, I do have another Finn video, which I made a year ago, that's fully pimped out rares and mythics all the way pretty much but to be honest even with the archetype of this deck death touch most cheap death touches are common anyway so this is actually a gift sent from god if you want to play magic if you don't have the money yeah highly recommend there's not really much more i can say if you do have any questions please ask me in the comments below i always respond unlike many other youtubers out there it's kind of rude i think that some people don't respond especially when people want to learn if you're offering a teaching video and you're not answering people's questions what is the actual point I've seen many big creators not reply. I will always reply. I read every single message, even if it is negative. If it is too negative, though, obviously I will probably not be as inclined. But yeah, anything that's questions or any positivity, throw them away. I've got enough negativity in my life already. Anyway, yeah, watch the Tusky video before this and then watch any other ones, which I've got a whole playlist of tutorial videos. Check them out as well. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.